Have you ever wondered what would happen if your blender suddenly became sentient? Why would you do that? But you know, here we are. This book is hella problematic. Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Winnie Reads where I talk about books and things. And today I bring you a kind of review, kind of discussion about Autonomous by Annalie Newitt. I never do reviews on my channel basically because I suck at them because I just don't know what to say. Like, I'm not a literary connoisseur per se, you know? I, I, I just read books and it, sometimes I think about them a lot. So what, what can I, when I, when I go into a review, my brain automatically wants to go into some kind of like objective, was this well written, what does it say, etc. But the truth is, I don't have the tools to do that. But this book does have a lot of interesting topics and I kind of want to talk about that. So first off, just a little synopsis is, this book is about a woman called Jack. And Jack is basically a, how do you call that? What, what, what do they call it? She is a drug pirate. Basically in this world, we have a bunch of drugs that can help you do better in life, get a better job, have a better marriage, you know, they can help you concentrate better. Things that give you an advantage over other people. The problem is Big Pharma controls these drugs and they control the prices. So what does Jack do? She reverse engineers the drugs and then basically pirates them to sell them at a cheaper price. And then one day she realizes that a drug that she reverse engineered is causing severe addiction tendencies in people that are taking them, but that this wasn't discussed or this wasn't made aware to the public when the drug went out. And now that you have people that are consuming this drug by this big pharmaceutical com uh, company that are getting addicted to the drug and are exhibiting symptoms of severe addiction after taking it only a few times. And then there are two other characters which are Elias and Paladin. Elias is a, basically he's a cop and he's sent to catch Jack and Paladin is a machine that has a human brain but this human brain is not like what we expect the human brain to be where it's like it controls everything in fact they discuss in the book that this brain is kind of there sometimes to distract people that attack these robots because they think if they destroy the brain that they're gonna destroy the whole of the robot and the reality is the brain just controls like facial recognition or something. That's our basic plot. But here's the thing. The plot is kind of, uh, it gets kind of like really bogged down by sex. And I don't mean sex as in like there's a lot of smut, but there is a lot of focus on who's sleeping with whom and 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 the feelings that come with that and, and, and stuff like that. And I think the plot kind of get lost. Like at one point I was like, what are these two doing? Oh, that's right. They're looking for this girl. Oh, I remember now. So is this really a good book? I, I, I would give it a three stars. It was fine. But here's what I really want to talk about when it comes to this, to this book. And it's the idea that where is gender? What does gender mean to a machine? And why are we so insistent that machines would have gender in the future? Paladin is a character here, again, one of the bad guys that is going after Jack. And it is a computer and it says that basically it only uses the pronouns he because humans associate robots that are built for combat to be male. But it doesn't care because it's a robot. It doesn't have a gender. So to it, it's really illogical to think of itself as male or female. And honestly, whether it's called he or she is not relevant to it. But here's the thing. There is another character here that is called Elias. And Elias starts to kind of literally get a hard on for Paladin. But when Paladin kind of starts to dig into this attraction he's getting off of Elias. Elias uses a homophobic slur and he says that he's not the F word. And Elias is like, does it 
matter i think where the book starts to get like a little bit into where does gender reside is because paladin is attracted to elias but now it knows that elias is not attracted to males so could it make somehow elias see it as a female so that their attraction can flourish. And what Paladin finds is that the brain that it has actually belonged to a female and he shares this with Elias. And Elias is like, I knew it, I knew you were actually a woman, that's why I'm attracted to you. And Paladin is like, Neh. Paladin doesn't feel that just because it had a brain that was transplanted from a female that it is female in fact it still doesn't think it's anything and it said within the book that paladin doesn't have any way of distinguishing it from any other machine and it doesn't distinguish itself so that's what i found interesting in fact paladin loses its brain at one point and yet it can still continue a relationship with Elias because what this book is saying that perhaps you, the machine's gender does is, is not a conversation to be had because it's a machine like I don't like what I felt this book was saying is we don't look at our computers our cameras our toaster ovens and think Oh, this one's a girl, this one's a boy, uh, my computer is trans. We don't do that because machines would not have those concepts. Those concepts would be put there by us. In fact, Paladin ma does make a comment where he says, I think Elias, like he does some like investigating about the idea of going from he to she. And he says that maybe Elias considers it trans because he thinks that maybe it was a woman all along but that it was given the incorrect pronouns and paladin itself says no that's not the case for me the reality is i don't have a gender and i found that fascinating i'm not saying that this is correct i'm not saying I just think that that is something really interesting to look into to this within this book because all of the time when we read futuristic stories we find that our AI has been gendered but where does that gender idea come from is it something inherently within the AI does the AI feel f female does it feel male and what happens if we have a transgender AI what does that mean where is gender because these machines don't have brains i'm not saying that i don't i'm not saying that i believe that your gender is in your brain i don't i i don't know i'm not educated enough on this <laughs> but this is just such an interesting aspect of this book that i feel a lot of people misinterpret it because a lot of people think oh this robot changes its sex just because it wants to have sex with a human who is a homophobe um but 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 i don't think people that say that read this book because Paladin itself doesn't consider that it changed its John gender and that that in any way has any effect on it as a living being. So yeah, I, I actually thought that was the most interesting part of the book. The rest of it, honestly, I'm gonna be honest, this was like a three star. This wasn't like a great read. This isn't something that I'm gonna be like, Oh my god, I want to reread that for the action or for whatever. There are a lot of sexualities, there are a lot of things discussed here, but I just found that aspect of this book extremely interesting and extremely divisive because I saw a lot of the Goodreads reviews and everybody was talking about how this book treats gender. And I think a lot of people missed the point that Paladin doesn't have a gender. And I think that that's very interesting. Why do we think our machines would have a gender? Is it because we have genders and we created machines, therefore we create them with, with our binary 
ideas of gender and why does a machine have to like even care about that? I don't know and the book doesn't answer that for you but I think it's something that is a lot of food for thought and I think it's something that I haven't seen really discussed a lot in sci-fi or the sci-fi that I have read anyway because I haven't read everything so yeah um if you've read this book please let me know what you felt and it's okay if you were angry at the whole paladin Elias thing Elias does have like a troubled past where someone once called him a homophobic slur that's not delved into the only character that was really whose mind we really delve into is paladins everyone else is kind of like a little bit flat but I did enjoy Paladin's inner monologue and the way that it wants to justify wanting to be with Elias and how it finds a way around that. Oh, so Elias likes women, so guess what? My brain was one of a woman. Maybe that makes him like me. And it does. And that doesn't mean that that's good. It's just something that happens within the book. I think sometimes we forget that just because something is in a book doesn't mean that we agree with it sometimes it can just be food for thought and this gave me food for thought and i wanted to share it with you guys this book is hella problematic i think that the the situation with paladin and elias and the fact that how it's resolved in the end was kind of like oh so i have a woman brain so now you can be attracted to me and elias like hell yeah if you have a woman brain you're a woman but i think the book does say that that's not it you know that that's the way that elias has found to justify to himself this attraction to this machine that really has no gender but for him it's very important that this machine is female and the machine is like well if you want it i'm fine with that because it means nothing to me it's not a transgender machine it's not it's because that's not a concept that I that a machine would have at least in this world I just wanted to talk about this book a little bit I wanted to talk about the aspects of sexuality discussed in the book the idea that after Paladin's brain which is the female brain that Elias was attracted to is destroyed Elias is still in love with Paladin and Paladin is still like I just want to have sex with Elias so yeah and it's interesting because they're the bad guys they're like clearly the bad guys but i think annie I'm, I'm, I'm sorry i keep saying annie annalee newitz tried to do something interesting do i think it was effective the way she kind of made tried to make you feel something towards this cop who is a ruthless killer who is also a homophobe i don't think so I, I didn't like Elias. I found him hella problematic. I find that his excuse for being homophobic was because one time he got called a slur. You know, it was that, that part was dumb. But that part, the part about palette and the part about machines and gender and, and the brain and why does it matter if I have a female brain or a male brain uh, those are I, i'm doing quotations because again it's uh, it's like to paladin the idea that its brain was female is kind of like if you have a heart transplant and then like imagine that you identify as female and you get a transplant from a male and it's a male heart does that mean that you become male or part male no and paladin feels that way about its brain just because it has a part of a person that used to identify as a certain gender that it doesn't matter to it it doesn't mean anything to it but he says like if if it means something to to this human then i'll just tell him okay you can call me she because it doesn't care <laughs> like i keep saying that Paladin doesn't care because it just is called he because humans think that combat droids are he's because you know combat males again this book is hell problematic but I think that that's the point this world is an ugly 
disgusting, evil world. And I think the characters in it reflect that. They're completely unlikable characters. Like, I even found Jack, who was supposed to be our heroine. Like, I found her really unlikable. Yeah, I don't think there's a single likable character in this book. But you see, I'm, I'm the kind of person that doesn't mind that. I'm, I'm the kind of person that likes books where everybody is not problematic, but like unlikable or problematic. As long as the book knows that they're problematic. And I, and this book, I think in the end, it almost paints Elias and Paladin as not problematic. But I don't know. I think the book knows that everybody here is problematic. Which is why giving some characters a happy ending was like, Annalise, was, was that the right way to go with that? I don't know. I don't think so. So yeah. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about, about Autonomous. If you've read this book, if you're interested in this book, if you think that I am spewing bullshit, please let me know down in the comments nicely. Again, these are just things that made me, like this book made me think about. It's not me saying that this is right, this is wrong. It's just a discussion. It's, it's more of a discussion than a review. So yeah, that was my little talk about Autonomous by Annalie Newitz, please. Let me know how you felt about it. And well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of scared to post this. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. And well, I leave you with a friendly reminder that I post videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And sometimes I pepper in uh, videos throughout the week if I'm feeling a little bit extra, which apparently I am today. I just wanted to also say that I still have down below links to places that you can go to to learn more about certain subjects regarding Black Lives, the Black Lives Matter movement, and they will be down there as long as it's necessary for things to change. So yes, without further ado, I bid you adieu and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Bye guys.